Hey lovelies, it's Heather. Gonna go ahead and shoot today's video and get it out of the way. I just got back um, from my grandmother's. Uh, I went and borrowed Jennifer's car and put $10 in gas in it and headed down to my grandmother's and took a few things there because like I said in yesterday's video, I guess I'm just gonna move back in with her and everything, so. <sighs> Oh my Jesus, I was down there from 11 until like 4. Like I was down there 5 hours. And it's like, there's a part of me that's kind of exhausted. That sounded like my dad's damn truck outside. But um, anyways, I was just talking to my grandmother about everything and stuff. And then come to find out, I mean here I am, I quit my job yesterday. And even though I didn't call in and quit. Heck, they didn't even miss me. They didn't even call to see where I was at or anything. So, <clears throat> my new job that I've just had for a month. But there's no way I was going to make enough money to make it until I get my taxes back so I can get a car. So, it just all, <laughs> you know. And even though it's like I could... Possibly kind of try to sell stuff and everything with the way people are and then in all honesty with the way that people sh Treat me like shit. It's the best way to word it and everything <sighs> I don't know even if uh, you go and set out like at a flea market up here Everybody wants everything for 25 cents or a dollar um you try to set out stuff where you're at and everything, and if people have got an opinion about you or something, I don't know. You just, you got to do that shit, and it takes time. It takes time to, like, build up customers, if you will, to a degree. Even if you're just, even if I was to put a sign out and be like, you know, move and sell. Must get rid of everything. It would take probably over a month to get everything sold, and I don't have over a month to get everything sold. And, uh, so, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna probably go back there more than likely and everything, and I hate to say it, but it's like, after I got used to being there, because it's, it's a routine, you know, or whatever, but my God, the conversations, oh, and my grandmother and such the gossip. And apparently somebody is watching my YouTube that's in my family and they are just gossiping their ass away or what the hell ever because things that my grandmother was saying to me and I'm just like, would you just come out and fucking say it? Um, she asked me as I was standing there. She asked me as I was fucking standing there in front of her. She said, Heather, do you live in reality? Have you ever had anybody say that shit to you? Because I've had, I've had them kind of say shit like that to me my whole goddamn life. I'm 30. It's old. It's old as shit. I was like, yes, I live in... F I didn't say fucking reality, but I was like, yes, I live in reality. I was like, I'm standing right here. I have on shoes. I have on pants. I have on a shirt. I am right in front of you. I'm standing here talking to you. Yes, I live in reality. And just shit like that that she says to me because she never gets it. She never understands. And like I said in my video prior, or it might be the video that I tried to shoot earlier and I lost today, I was like, my family is morons, I feel like. Because they are the logical, they don't understand emotional. They understand emotional when they want to because everybody is logical and emotional. But I am more emotional than I am logical. And they think because of that, that that means what logic I do have, you know, because I'm all emotional, must be like, I oh, did you see the dinosaur? He told me hi. And, you know, and uh, pretty rainbows. And, wow. You know, and all kinds of shit. And it's like, no, I fucking see shit for what it is. And that's another thing, too, is I'm a realist. And I, I got on to my grandmother, kind of, and I was like, y'all are fibbers. That's the reason I can't build a life with y'all. Y'all don't want to move forward. 
with your life. I do. Y'all want to stay stuck. My grandmother, she's been living at the same place since I was like 11 or whatever. So for 10, 20, 19, 19 years, that woman's been living there. 19 years, her life has been the same. She bitches about the same shit day in, day out, and everything else. Okay, that's fine. But you can't bitch about shit if you never even try to change it. And that's the thing, for instance. Um, everybody, um, her niece, everybody has wanted like her to move in with her niece. And her niece has wanted her to move in with her for years now. And she won't do it. She's never done it. She's n probably never going to do it. And she says it's because she feels uncomfortable at her niece's house. And she don't want to be a burden and all this shit and everything. And I come within a hair of, you know, doing a pot call in the kettle black type scenario on her. And being like, if the opportunity is there, then take it. If you're tired of the way that your life is then and the opportunity is there, then take it. But I don't live that way myself either because I was taught by them to worry. But I also have my morals and my the way that I just do things. And I'm wanting to stay humble, as humble as I can. And I'm wanting to stay honorable and stick to my morals as best as I can and stuff. I don't want to take one thing that I know that's going to spiral me a little bit and just spiral into this mess of a person to a degree. Not because I sit there and really look down on people that do that in their lives, but I do when they do it for years and 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 they keep complaining over and 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 over again. I get tired of it. And that's just like my grandmother, 19 years, you know, complaining about the same things. And it is so fucking exhaustive. And then it's poured over into me. Where it's like, since I was 15, car, 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 need to drive, need to drive, need to drive, car, 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 need to drive, need to drive, need to drive, car, 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 need to drive. Now I got my license, but I ain't got a car yet. So maybe if I bitch about a car for a little while, because hopefully, God willing, knock on some you know, damn wood, no badness come this way or what the hell ever. I'm going to have me a fucking vehicle. Very fucking soon. I've complained enough about it just as much as I have about having a damn license. Oh, <sighs> But anyways, I don't know. It's like, it's almost like a demon has possessed my family. It's like the generational curse of negativity and worry. And over worry, and it's like overkill over worry. You can't tell them anything without them worrying, supposedly, being curious, supposedly, and just keep on fucking going and keep on shit talking. And it's like, and I said it to my grandmother, I said, I said to her too while I was there, I was like, you know, one thing about you, I said, I could be sitting here, and if I do move back in, I could be living with you. And you could, and you're living with me. And like one day she could walk out and walk over to the neighbor's house and the neighbor could be like, you know, I saw Heather standing naked outside one day. Just any type of random shit. And my grandmother would believe it. And she lived, she would be living there with me. Like I put myself in this scenario, you know, to give her an example of how gossipy she is, you know? And I was like, and you would believe him. And then you'd get on the phone and you'd call up my aunt, you know, and you'd call up my mom and dad and be like, oh my God, do you know what Billy told me? You know, or whatever, because that's one of her neighbors. But do you know what he told me? Do you know what he said? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? This is what he said. This is what he said. That's what he said. And then they're like, oh, 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 oh. And then these people that don't even know me. That's the thing. I am such a mystery to my family. Because they don't even care to know me. I've never had my sister call and say, Hey, sis, can I come hang out? I've never had a cousin say, Hey, you want to spend some time with me? I, You know, like, I've never hung out with them for them to even give a shit to know who the fuck I am or how the fuck I operate or any goddamn thing. And so they, they would shit talk all that. And then I'd be sitting there and they'd be snickering, laughing, and talking shit about me at like, you know, the next three family parties. So like Thanksgiving, Christmas, and let's say 
Valentine's Day or Easter or some shit. And by Easter, I'm fed up and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Why do y'all keep laughing and snickering and pointing? Well, we're just laughing about that time that Billy told us that he's seen you standing outside naked. And I'm like, what the fuck are you even talking about? And it would be retarded ass shit like that. And that is the family that I have chosen to, 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 to come and be part of. And I don't know why. And I'm ready to fucking die and go home. Because if I can't, if I can't fucking live, if I can't get my ass up the fuck out of this goddamn situation of them, okay, they want to stay stuck. And that is what I was trying to do here. And that is what I was trying to do when I married my husband. And that is what I was trying to do. I've been trying to get out from underneath their thumb. And it's like I've had to turn into a fucking, I don't know, like a thin rubber band and just keep kind of inching my way out. And they just keep trying to pull me back, you know. And that's like them even taking my fucking kid from me. I asked my grandmother straight out. I said, if your mother... Great grandmother was alive right now. I said, if your mother was alive right now, what would she have said about them doing that to me? And she would have said she wouldn't have liked it. She wouldn't have liked it at all. I have a bunch of people in the whole town that are saying, that's stupid why you lost your kid. That's stupid. That don't make any sense. That is so stupid. That is so stupid. And I've had people be like, you're not even on drugs. You don't even do anything. Like, and then my grandmother's sitting there giving me the earful of all the gossip of, well, Ava told them that you made her walk the dogs. Yeah, the dogs are our fucking responsibility. You know what? Dad made me feed and water and walk and bathe my dogs and even clean out a shit pen that my dog was in. Ugh. Yeah, that's what the fuck happens when you're a kid and you have damn pets. And then my kid... Knowing this, just kept wanting to add to the pet line. I swear to God. We got a dog. Dog had puppies. We kept a dog. We had a cat. Mom, cat. My mom, well, my dad kicks my mom's cat out when she's in the hospital. Ava's crying. I love that cat. We get that cat. We're taking care of that fucking cat. Then she wants a bird because we had got her a gerbil and the gerbil died because our neighbor was an asshole and plugged this thing in to kill it on purpose. And the reason I even got her a gerbil when we first moved in, because we only had the two dogs and the one cat. The reason I got her the gerbil is because right before we moved in, her hamster died. And we'd had that hamster for a while. Like, I don't know, two years, a year and a half, something. And he was our baby. And the dogs even got along with the damn hamster. Like, he was family. Like... The dogs would lay there and let the hamster walk all over them. And they would sniff him and stuff. And Una would even kiss him. Clarabelle would. And Clarabelle was kind of scared of him. But he died. So I got her a gerbil. Because I was like, you want another hamster? And she's like, no. Because it's too close to her heart. You know, and everything. And I was like, well, do you want something else? So we got a gerbil. So then... A stray dog shows up. We take it in. Then we take my mom's cat in. Then she wants a bird. Then parakeets, birds, they're supposed to, supposed to have company or what the fuck ever. So we buy another bird. That bird dies. We had like, I don't know, two or three damn birds die. One of them was named Jasper. That little son of a bitch bit the hell out of me. I don't know how many fucking times. And one time I even put him in a crate and I was like, in like this little crate and I was like, don't bite me anymore. And I shook him, and I was like, you're retarded. And it wasn't, I mean, I'll be honest, you know, but it wasn't like, you know, shaking him, like shaking baby syndrome or something. It was just, he literally just bit me, and I was bleeding, and I put him in there, and I shut it, and I was like, you're so stupid. And I sat him down, and he's just like, you know. And then, I mean, he, he done bit me at that point in time probably about five or six damn times. There was something wrong with that bird when we got him. He was not tame at all in any way, shape, or form. But not only that, he tried to attack our other bird. He was just a vicious-ass bird. That's all there is to it. Like, he was mean. He, he was not a good bird. And I was trying to train him, and I would think I had him trained, and the son of a bitch would bite me. 
Like, I'd be like, oh, Ava, look, you know, he's staying on my finger, and he's being so nice, and I'm walking around, and he could fly. He could fly, and he he was just aggressive. He was just mean, and he would fucking bite me. But anyways, so we had Jasper. Jasper died. Well, we only had the one bird, Matilda. And Matilda's the one that died in December before my daughter went, and I sent her over to spend summer, I mean, not summer, but winter break with my parents. <sighs> and she died because Ava wouldn't feed and water. And I kept trying to tell Ava, Ava, I'm tired of feeding and watering your bird for you. You need to be responsible, this and that. Well, even at that time, when the bird died before Matilda died, and we had Matilda alone, alone by herself for, I don't know if it was a full year, but it was, it was a while we had that bird by herself, and she was so fucking good. She was so tame. She was so sweet. She was so kind. She never bit us. We could feed. I mean, she she was just a perfect bird. And that's the reason whenever I found her dead that night, whenever we come home, I just bawled like a baby. I just, oh my God, I, fu I fucking, like, I just, part of me died is the best way to word it. And so anyways... My kid is still on the kick of, you know, like before the bird died. And so here we are, three dogs, two cats, and one bird. And my kid's like, can we get some fish? You know, can can we get a gecko? I want a bearded dragon, you know. I can't, can we this? Can we that? Can we this? Can we that? And then she had ducks over at my parents' house, and her ducks died. And her her first duck I mean, it just, he was her baby. His name was Ruth. And he died, and she had another one named Rascal, and we didn't know Ruth was a boy. And so we, and anyways, we kept his name Ruth because baby Ruth, you know, or whatever. But, uh, anyways, we don't know how he died. Um, but, and then Rascal died there shortly after, and Rascal was a female, and she had eggs, but they were never, there was never any baby duckies, so. And there was something still in her eggs, and I have no idea what, like, I don't know, because I wasn't over there, I wasn't living there, and they didn't give a shit to try to protect the ducks any more than what the hell they did and stuff and everything, but, um. My kid just pet, pet, I want a pet, I want a pet, I want a pet, another pet, another pet, another pet. And we got to the point where we had three dogs, two cats, and a bird. And the landlord was even like, no, no more. And I was even talking to the landlord, and I was like, well, what about small things that stay in a cage like, you know, a gecko or a hamster, you know? And she's like, no, you know. But then when the bird died, it's like, well, we're going to get a hamster because the bird died, you know? Like, but we didn't. You know, and that, that was like, because the bird died on the 20th and then Ava went over on the 23rd and that's actually what I was going to get her for Christmas was a hamster. But then when I told my dad that, my dad's like, no, just get her another bird. And I'm like, but she picked the bird out herself and that's the reason the bird was so kind and everything and we had time and all this. And I'm like, and it's Christmas and we don't have time to stand in the pet store you know, for three hours trying to find the best bird, most calm, you know, and whatever and everything. And then my dad is, and they kept dying left and right in, um, antsy conditions, I started. Why is my fucking phone skipping so much? That is ridiculous. If this doesn't load, I'm gonna be pissed. But, uh, so anyways, um, He had two or three birds die over there. And as a matter of fact, one of our birds, the first bird that we got, we sent over we sent back over there and it died over there. So that's one of the birds. And then Jasper died. So we only had two birds, I think, die here until Matilda died. So we had three. But um one of them didn't die over here, it died over there. Cause we was like, oh, well, it needs company, so it stayed over there and everything and it ended up dying. So we technically only had two birds die over here which was Jasper and Matilda. But anyways, fucking hell. <sighs>
But the reason the birds kept just dropping, if you will, over there and everything is because where they had the cage, for starters, and then my dad, and he had the TV on constantly, 24-7, wouldn't cut it off or anything. But my dad, and the way that he gets up, and he bitches, and he bitches, and he bitches, and he bitches, and it's incessant. Just like when I sit here and I make my video, and I talk, and I talk, and I talk, and it's incessant, and I take up the whole hour. But then after that, after I have my time of venting, you know, or whatever, then I get up, and I go on with my life, and I don't have to vent anymore. My dad... He's just constant, constant bitching, just constant, all the time, constant, you know, around the clock, you know, and then even if it's not verbally bitching, it's like he'll sit there and he'll just, <sighs> you know, and they sighs and everything, and it's just like, oh my God, would you shut up, you know, and so that and the stress of living there and in their house and their environment. And that's the thing too, is my nieces got mad because their birds died. My dad went and got, he went and got two birds at first. Then he got a third bird. Then those birds all died. Then he went and got two more birds. Then those two birds died, I think. And then they got two more birds and those birds died. So I think they had seven birds that died. I don't know. Or five. I don't know. They had quite a few. But one of them was ours that we sent back over there because we brought it here, I think, for a day. And then it was like, oh, they need company. Well, we'll just take and leave it over at Nan and Papa's house, you know. And so that's what we did. Because this is when I was, um, well, this is when I was still letting Ava go over and be babysat quite a bit. So it was like, you'll see your bird three times a week at least, you know, and just let it stay over there. <sighs> but anyways, uh, they got mad when their last set of birds died from my two nieces because our bird that we had bought before they'd even bought those was still alive. Like, my dad's like, well, how's your bird still alive? That don't make any sense. How's your bird still alive? I, I ain't paying no more for another damn bird fucking things just keep fucking dying on me and this and that and dying and everything. And I was like, because it's calm in our house. Like, literally, it's calm in our house. It's quiet. It's peaceful. We're not negative, anxious people like what y'all are. It's calm. <sighs> but anyways, so back to today and going to my grandmother's and all that. I went there and I talked to her about all kinds of stuff. And I talked to her about her fibbing. And, you know, and I was like, or the whole family fibbing, you know, and I was like, that's the reason, one reason my life is so fucked up. And she's like, what do you mean? And I said, I said, I just quit my job because when I called you and I was like, hey, you know, I need help because she's always told me, you know, when I've called like two and three times since my kid's been taken, if you need any help, let me know. So I call and I'm like, hey, I need help. I'm not going to be able to make it next month. Or even if I make it next month, I will not be able to make it the next month. It's going to catch up to me. It's going to catch up to me unless I have a car right now. And a job right now. It's going to catch up to me. And even though Jen has her car, I can't borrow her car every day, all the time. Because she has a life and it's her car. I can't constantly be like, I need your car, I need your car, I need your car. And even last night when I was over at her house, she's like, yeah, you can't, you can't use my car to, uh, uh, what was it? She's like, you know, our friendship's pretty equal and stuff like that, or our, our relationship's pretty equal and the give and take and all that. And she's like, you know, you're a good friend and all this. And she's like, and I'm trying to find a circle of people that are like you, you know, like, and it, it's really sweet, you know, and everything that like, you know. It's like a compliment, kind of, you know, and stuff. And But then it's like a backhanded thing because she kind of said to me, she's like, you need to get out and socialize more. And I'm like, I've lived here my whole life. But then she's like, well, I couldn't live in the same place that I was, you know, born in and stuff or whatever and everything. She's like, it'd drive me crazy. And that did, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you know, but it's like I've tried to socialize with people, but unless you have money and unless you have something you can offer them, then they don't give a shit. 
but anyways, uh, so I called my grandmother and I was like, hey, you know, can you help me with this and that? Hold on, I gotta go check on this pizza I got cooking. Uh, oh shit. Looks like it got burnt quite a bit, but it's around the edge, and it was thawed, like, for a really long time, because while I was down at her house, she's the one who gave it to me. But anyways, maybe it's just the outer edge, I hope. <sighs> but, um, so anyways, dang on, uh, fuck, what was I saying? Uh, the, the fibbing thing. So I called her asking for help, and she's like, oh, I can only give you $100. And I'm thinking to myself yesterday, I'm like, okay, $100 is not going to make or break it. You know, it's not going to do it. It's not going to fix it. You know, it's not going to fix my problem. And even though if, if, if I wanted to risk it and all that, I could maybe, like, call each of my cousins and be like, hey, $50, hey, $50, hey, $50, you know, and shit like that. But I don't have a family like that where I can do that. I've never had a family like that where I can do that. And even though they want to give off the illusion whenever they find out, you know, like whenever it's come to a head two or three times in my life, even my cousin Kevin, he's been like, you know, uh, he's been like, uh, Hey, you know, well, you could have asked me. And I'm thinking, you are so fucking busy, son. Like, no, I can't ask you. Because you are so busy. Every time I see you, you're talking about how busy you are. And then y'all are talking about how busy you are. And everybody's always so busy, busy, busy. You know, no, I can't, I can't rely on you because you're busy, you know. And, uh, so anyways, she told me she could only give me $100. So then I get down there today, and I took uh, some stuff down there, you know, because I was like, well, hell, if I'm making a trip down there, I might as well go ahead and take some shit down there. And I get down there, and I will be damned. We're sitting there talking, and she's like, well, maybe. And it's about more money, that she could maybe help me out more financially than she could just giving me $100. And I'm like... This is the reason my life sucks in the back of my head. Like, I have, like, a dumb family is what I feel like. And I was like, see, I was like, I called you for facts, you know? I called you to know what the deal was, you know? And I was like, and you told me you could only give me $100. So I'm sitting there in my apartment, you know, and I'm like, what's the facts? Yeah, man, nah, 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 blah 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 blah. What's my many thousands of options? Because there are, depending on upon how you look at things, you know, and that that's even like you know, I I was like, I could just go stay in a homeless shelter and leave every fucking thing. I was like, or I I have enough money I could buy a plane ticket to somewhere or a bus ticket. But Lord knows what the hell had happened once I got there, because I'd be out of cash. Be like, well, uh, hey, you need somebody to sweep that? I'll, I'll sweep that if you pay me, if you pay me, you know, and get me a job and work my ass up from the, the bone, from the ground, you know, and stuff. I was like, but gee, you know, and just like be like, well, my kid, I'll get her eventually. I just have no idea when, you know, eventually she'll finally be like, I, you know, I think I miss my mom. You know, I think I miss my dogs. You know, I don't think it was that bad, you know. <sighs> but anyways, that's another thing, too, is my grandmother's sitting there, and she's like, oh, I think they done got full custody of her. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, no. They have temporary custody of my daughter. I have not received a damn thing from nobody, from courts, from the office, from my attorney, from anybody, for as far as going back up there and... Seeing about, you know, them taking me to court to get full custody of her. Uh, no, 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 no. No. 
And granted, the courts can look at me and be like, well, you didn't do this and you didn't do that and wait, you just quit your new job and you didn't and you didn't. And I know it looks bad. I know it looks bad. But holy shit, I'm in a mind fuck constantly with my family in the way that they are. Take my counselor in there. Let her tell you the fucking... I mean, you, uh, Jesus fucking Christ. Or just play all my goddamn YouTube videos. What the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with my phone? I swear if this don't take, I'm going to have to reshoot it. And I'm going to keep reshooting it until it picks up. It said download failing and it's not retrieving audio or something. Like what the fuck is it trying to download or who's trying to download my shit like as I'm sitting here doing it or something. And that's the thing too. Whatever happened earlier was funny as fuck. And even though it's rainy and stuff outside, something, something ain't adding up. Something ain't adding up somewhere. For as far as the network and all this and everything. But I'm still going to keep on shooting this video until it's at its time or until I get done, damn it. But, uh... So anyways, my grandmother told me she could only give me $100. I know $100 is not enough to help me. And then I go down there, and then she and I've done quit my job, you know. And I go down there, and she's like, "Oh, um, well, maybe I could have paid this and helped with that." And then she told me that she's gay. She went and got a loan to help my parents. And I'm just like, "Holy shit!" I literally, I am the scapegoated, damnest, like I, I'm the scapegoatedest person. In the whole fucking world, I feel like. Because I'm not just scapegoated for as far as my immediate family, my mom and dad, and my sister, and my grandmother. But there's my aunts, and my uncles, and my cousins, and my this, and my that, and everything. And it's just fucking ridiculous. It's just fucking ridiculous, man. But then I'm sitting there and I'm like, so, so you lied to me, you know? And I was just like, oh my God. And I was like, what happened to getting it from the horse's mouth? You know, taking it straight from the horse's mouth. And then I really got her on this because I said to her, I said, I said, y'all think that y'all need to, because she's talking about Ava. And she's like, well, you don't know what Ava told them and this and that. No, I don't. I don't know what Ava has told the courts about why she, you know, supposedly wanted to live with them and what was so horrible about me. No, I don't know what my daughter has sit there and said about me. And I don't know if it was a lie. I don't know if it was something that was spoon-fed to her by my mom over the months because the months leading up were very weird. Very weird indeed. And then my child was in a car wreck back in fucking, I don't even know when... August, October, September, something around in the... I don't know. And when that happened to her... So, that that kind of messed up a little bit of her long-term memory, in all honesty. And so you're going to step in like a fucking criminal or whatever and be like, oh, you know, I'm going to replace her long-term that she can't remember anything about you with, you know... All these stories about how horrible you may have possibly been able to be or what the fuck ever or some type of shit. I don't know. And it's brainwashing. And people do it. The fucking government does it. So you want to tell me that my mom couldn't have done it to my damn kid? My kid who's, who's spending the night, who's going and visiting, who's being babysat, and then... There, whenever she had the wreck, and something funny's going on, and I'm starting to realize something funny's going on, so I start pulling my kid back and saying, no, you've got to stay here with me. you got to come with me. You can't go over there. No, no, no. And every time you go over there, you come back and you're mad at me. You're different. You've changed. You're not you, you know, and all this shit, and you're not acting right, you know? Because it's two different worlds. It's two different lifestyles. The way that we live. You know. But anyways. It's just been a bunch of shit. It's just a bunch of shit. It's just a whole lot of a bunch of shit. God is it. But anyways. 
so I said to my grandmother, I said, even at that, though, I said, do I know everything about you and dad's relationship to my grandmother? She said, no. I said, do I know everything about you and Uncle Mike's relationship? No. You know, and I said, do I know about you and Papa's relationship? Do I know everything about it? And she's like, nobody knows everything about me and your Papa's relationship. Nobody knows anything about me or anybody's relationship. And I was like, see, exactly. And I was like, do you know who Keanu Reeves is? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, the actor, you know who he is? And she's like, yeah, I do. And I was like, okay. And I was like, well, you know, he has this uh, saying or whatever that he's kind of been known to say or whatever, which other people have said it too, but he said it quite a bit about how you work in silence, about how you do things in silence. How the fuck, when I am being raised and interrogated my whole life, and I'm being taught that that's the right way to be. How the fuck am I supposed to grow up and have a comforting feeling around these people that are supposed to be my family? And these people, I mean my mom and my grandmother, when they want to play 20 fucking questions all the goddamn time. All the goddamn fucking time. And they have since I was little. And because... I couldn't, I couldn't even think. I remember getting mad and going outside and, like, screaming in fifth grade, you know, like, into a pillow. And my grandmother, like, kind of making comments about how she thought I was crazy. And I'm like, it's not quiet. And I was like, it's never quiet in the house. I was like, it's else you talking over here at your house, because this is when she was living across the street, so I might have been sixth grade. But I was like, it's never quiet. I was like, I'm trying to brainstorm. I got an essay or a paper or a report to write, and I'm trying to do what the teacher said. And the teacher's like, get, get, in, a silent, get in the silent spot in your room. There is no silent spot in my room. There's constant TV going and noise, noise pollution. Somebody talking, somebody asking questions. But anyways, so I was like, okay, I don't know everything about y'all's relationships, I was like, so why do y'all think that y'all have to know everything about mine and my daughter's relationship? I said, why are you privy to that information, but I'm not privy to the information about you and your relationships with people? She didn't know what to say. She just, and she's getting mad because she knows, she knows that I'm right in the things that I'm saying, but she's going to try to manipulate and make me see things her way. And it's like we're, we're at a stalemate about it. And she's just going to have to learn to get the fuck over it. And not take it as a threat. That I'm just over here like a blank wall. You know, she's able to be a blank wall, if you will. Over here doing her own thing and having her own shit and everything else. She's over here a little blank wall. And she's pushing up against me all the time, you know. And my wall keeps tilting, you know. And she just keeps pushing. And that's the way my mom's done me my whole life. And people do me. They just keep pushing their wall. You know, it's like, oh, you know, it's like, here's a line down the middle and here's two walls. You know, and that's how you're supposed to be. That's like a healthy relationship. This is where I'm at. That's where you're at. This is what I'm willing to do. That's what I'm willing to do. So on and so forth. Is that just the shadow on my hand making my hand look that fucking funny? I guess so. Because the light. Or maybe it is where my wrist is fucked up and you can see it. Anyways. Uh, so, <laughs> dang on, uh, here we are as walls, you know, and it's like, they, they keep doing that to me. They keep doing that to me. All the time. All the time. All the time. Half for 30 years, you know. And then they get me like this. And then I go like that. And that's when they're like, oh, you're so angry, you're so angry, you know. And then they get me back to straight. And then they wait a little while, and then here they go again. You know, here they go again. You know, they keep, they keep rocking, you know. They keep rocking me back, and then they push again. And that's what has happened with them taking my kid. It was a big push. And so, I guess I gotta come back with a big bite whenever I do come back. But, Lord Jesus Christ. Time. Money. Resources. Fuck. Fuck. It's a lot to have to 
figure out and look for. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, so I was like, you, you lied to me and told me you could only help me with a hundred dollars and now I've done quit my job. So I've done fucked myself. And she's like, well, maybe you could go back and, you know, another job and this and that and I could pay your rent. And, you know. and I'm like, yeah, but like nothing is real to them. They lie about so much. They're like the government. And I even told her that. I said, y'all are like the government. I said, people go out and they study the government so that way they think they can figure things out. So that way they can follow the little rules of life led by the gov or set by the government. You know, so that way they can better themselves and keep growing and so on and so forth. And that's even like the Bible. People read the Bible, you know, and all that. And, you know, follow the rules, follow the rules. But the thing is, is interpretation. The way that people interpret it, the way that they perceive it, and so on and so forth. Just because my dog, we're both living, breathing things. My dog looks and supposedly sees them black and white, or I don't know if they redone it and said that they don't or whatever and stuff. But my dog supposedly sees everything in black and white or did or whatever, supposedly. And I see color. I see color. Who's wrong? Who's wrong there? Is she wrong? Am I wrong? And then, oh my God, you want to get scientific with me, honey. Technically, all the colors that we think that we see, they're not really the colors that we think they are. It's just the way that our eyes perceive them. I've read up on shit talking about stuff like that. And that's even like people that are colorblind. <sighs> to each their own. Everybody has their own path. And my family has been trying to attack mine since I was born... Because my path doesn't fit their standard of what a path is. And it's like, oh my fucking God, can you just leave me the fuck alone? And then that's the thing too, is uh, she was mentioning about my cousin, or my dad's cousin or whatever, that's down the line in the family that was born with nothing and stuff, and uh, anyways, uh, intersex if you will, and I guess, or I don't know exactly which terminology would best. But anyways, she she's mentioning that to me. And then she's mentioning um, my cousin's, one of my cousin's wives ran off and left him for a woman or whatever. And she's talking to me about that. And she's like, can you believe that? And leaving uh, the kid and this and that and the age of the kids, you know, and everything. And I was just like, oh my God, shut up. But I know she's getting at that because she's trying to hint about sexuality and shit like that. Like, these people that, I don't know how the hell, I don't know. I don't know how the hell you're supposed to survive with people that don't know what a boundary is. And they don't know how to respect it. Because they're too busy setting their own boundaries. And one of their boundaries is that you always have to answer them. Because if you if, if my grandmother asked me a question and I don't know the answer because I've done this to her when I used to live with her before. She'd be like, what are you doing? And I would lie. This is me fibbing. Nothing. Because I'm standing there and I'm thinking, hmm, what do I want to eat? Hmm. Do I want a bowl of cereal? Hmm. Do I want this? Hmm. Do I want that? Hmm. What do I want to eat? I'm standing thinking about it. You know? And she'd be like, what are you doing? I'd be like, nothing. 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 Because that's the only way that I can get them off my ass, but then I still end up telling them. Because then they ask again. They're like, well, why are you standing there? And I'm like, because I'm thinking of what the hell I want to eat. And there's the bitch inside of me that's just as bitchy as them and wants to be like, does it fucking matter? Because I used that as an example talking to her. Because I said, I said, 
are you going to be able, are we going to be able to do this? Because every time I've lived with her, it's got worse. Every time I've lived with her, it's got worse. I don't want it to get worse. And it was bad the last time. I had to call the cops on her because she was threatening to kill me. And the damn uh, fucking person, the operator, the 911 operator heard her saying all this. And then whenever she got done talking in the back, 911 operator says, uh, is she done now? And I said, I don't know. She told them flat out, God, maybe I shouldn't go back and live with her. She told them flat, or she told me flat out, and they heard it. She told me flat out that she was going to lie when the cops showed up, and she was going to tell them that I pushed her, and then that's the reason that she was threatening to kill me. She was threatening to kill me because we had puppies in the house, and the puppies were making a mess. The same worry wart woman that wouldn't let me put the puppies outside because, oh, they might get cold and sick and this and that and, oh, the poor babies and this and that. And so then she's getting mad because they're in the house and they're making a mess and I was working and I couldn't keep up with the mess of six little puppies constantly. And so I was just, and it's just kind of like living here. I asked about fencing in the yard. I never got the yard fenced in. And then the landlord wants to bitch about the floors in the house, you know, and it's like, I'm trying to go about shit logically, but for some reason, I can't get people to cooperate. But anyway, so she was bitching about it and she told me she was going to kill the puppies. She said, well, I want those puppies out now. I'm tired of them. They've been in the house. And she said, and I'm going to kick all y'all out. And I'm, I'm going to start with those puppies or something like that. Or, Anyways, but she said, she literally said, because my, my kid, he was standing there. And she said to me, she said, I'm going to throw those damn puppies out. And I don't care if it kills them or not. And they were only a month old at the time, I think, or about six weeks. They wasn't, they were, they were still pudgy little round things. And I, I stood up, you know, or whatever. Oh, well, I was done standing. I took a step towards her. Even though there's like a gate that she usually used to keep. And I was still behind the gate. And she's like, anyways. But I took a step towards the gate to block her from coming if she was going to try to come. And... She's like, and you ain't going to do nothing about it. And I was like, you ain't going to touch those puppies. And then she's like, well, I'll kill you. And I was like, oh, you going to kill me now? Why? Because I'm telling you that you're not going to throw little innocent puppies outside and not give a shit if you break their neck. I was like, uh, you, you ain't going to touch those puppies. I was like, no. And... So then she threatened to kill me. And I was like, oh, you going to kill me for it? Or I take that back because, hell, I done said that. I'm repeating myself. But anyways, I was like, you know, oh, you going to kill me for that? And she's like, yes, I will. And I was like, I'd like to see you try. Or I said something like that. And she's like, oh, I'll do it in your sleep. And I was like, you will? And she's like, yeah. And that's when I called the cops. And then I talked to the cops, told them what was going on, and she's in the background. She's going, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, this. And, that. and I'm going to tell them. And, you know, and I was like, you ain't nothing but sitting there lying through your damn teeth, you know. And she's like, well, I'm going to tell them that you pushed me. And that's the reason that I said I was going to kill you is because you pushed me. I was like, I have a witness right here, my child. Uh, if we go to court over this, my child going to testify to the truth. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And that's one thing, too. My kid, me, going to court. The court's asking me, did you, did you do this? Yes, I did. <gasps> it, if I'm ignorant enough to actually tell the truth, then don't you think that I've raised my child ignorant enough to tell the damn truth? But she's also had her grandparents around that are influencing her to lie, just like my sister loves to lie. And who was coming to court? Who was sitting out there 
I even had uh, the woman, Melissa, that was giving me a ride. I asked my sister two damn times why she was up there or whatever. I was like, uh, or I didn't even ask her. She's so nervous. That's the thing with lying people. They're so nervous. They got to talk so much when they're in a situation that they're nervous about. And then it makes people like me look bad because we're nervous for other reasons when we are nervous. Because I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh God, somebody's going to fucking think that about me. Because I sit here and I make YouTube videos and I'm fucking talking for a fucking hour and people are fucking morons. But anyways, <clears throat> so my sister comes into court the first time and I'm just like looking, we're sitting across from each other. And uh, my sister just blatantly, loudly is like, yeah, I got to get my car tag, uh -huh. you know, or whatever. And it's just like, hmm. Uh. And then we go there again, and she's there again. And she's like, yeah, I still got to go get my car tag, you know. And she's not actually like that. That's just me being a smartass because I'm a very passionate person. I'm like a fucking actress for as far as passion-wise. But anyways, so she's like, yeah, that's, I'm here again, you know. And so I mentioned it to Melissa that was my ride at the time, and I was like, that's the second damn time she's saying she's here for a damn car tag. And I was like, if she shows up again, we both going to know it ain't get a damn car tag. Uh, and then even at that, it only takes one time to get your fucking car tag. But maybe they messed it up. But you don't have to come a third and a fourth time, sis. And sorry that you think that I'm such a fucking moron. That you think that I believe that you got to come up there every time mom and dad go to court about me and my kid. My kid that you have never even let spend the night over at your damn house. And you gonna sit there and be like, uh -huh, I'm here for my car tag. No, you ain't. Okay? You're a liar. You're a liar. <sighs> oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus is up in heaven. Help me and protect me through everything. And help me to get my damn kid back. Jesus Christ, please help me to get my kid back. But let her learn all her lessons that she needs to before she comes back. That way, whenever she comes back, it's just me and her chill, relax. Her dogs, her cats, everything good, we good. And they can be over there, and we gonna be over here. Like, please, please, Lord Jesus up in heaven. Please, please, please. Because that's all I've been wanting since day one. Is to, to... And that's the thing, too, is I spoke about how, like, logically looking. Okay, okay, I'm this emotional person and there are all these logical people that are in my family. So I'm the oddball out. I'm the black sheep of the family. All that and everything. And then that's the reason it's like, oh, I'm an earth angel. And oh, this, I'm highly sensitive. And oh, I'm an empath. And all this and everything. You just don't fit in is the best way to word it. You just don't fit in. But even when you say that, then there's dark stigma around it, you know? There, there's this dark stigma around not fitting in. It doesn't matter if you're morally a good person or not. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Believe me, I know, because I even asked my grandmother today. I said, I said, when you look at me and you think about me, I said, because oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to sit here and fuck somebody or get high or whatever just to fucking live. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to give in to that shit. I was like, I'm not going to fucking do it. I was like, hell fucking shit. No, I'm not going to do it. And I was like, for as far as morally speaking, I was like, what do you think of me? And she's like, well, I think you're a good person, Heather. I love you just as much as I love everybody else. Well, you sure as shit don't treat me like it, you know. You might for as far as, you know, my cousins might be like, she's let you live there with her. Well, most of my cousins have lived there with her, you know. But other than that, the hell that I've had to go through, the, the bickering and the incessant just shit, it's like, and talking and things. Oh, and that's the thing, too, is I was talking to her about how if I do come back, if I do end up coming back, I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to handle it. I was like, I don't know what the fuck to do. I was like, I don't know. I was like, because there's been times, because I know, because I've lived there before. I was like, 
do you know that, like, I would wake up every day and I would literally walk in there into the living room where she's at. And I would be standing there thinking about, you know, my breakfast. And I know I used this example earlier, you know, in my video or whatever. But I'd be like, hmm, what am I going to eat for breakfast? So, well, we have oatmeal, we have eggs, we have... And I'm thinking this to myself. I'm not standing there talking to myself. I'm not sitting there going, we have eggs, we have oatmeal, you know, and like, oh, eggs, yes, I want eggs. Let me eat my finger because it's an egg. I'm not insane, you motherfucking sons of bitches. And if you got a goddamn problem with it, everybody in my family knows where the fuck I'm at right now. Come knock on my door. We will settle it. I will square dance out in the parking lot with your ass. And I'll go to jail for it. Because right about now, everything else is just falling to shit. So why the fuck not? You think I'm crazy? Any of my cousins? My sister? My mom? My dad? Y'all think I'm crazy? My aunt? Y'all think I'm crazy? Come say the shit to my face. Come say the shit to my face. Okay? Come do it. But anyways, so when I was living with my grandmother before, I'd be standing there. Like, I would literally walk into the kitchen, and I would be standing there. And I'm just, like, turning my head or just standing there. And my grandmother would be like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, nothing. And then she'd be like, what, what are you doing? And I'd be like, nothing. She'd be like, well, I done made eggs and bacon. Um, You can eat that. You know? And it's just like fun so that way she won't bitch because if i would have got out a bowl which i've done because i've lived there before i get out a bowl and say i want oatmeal instead and i start to make the oatmeal uh did you hear me did you hear me i have eggs that i made and bacon what you don't want eggs and bacon wouldn't you like to eat eggs and bacon and it's like, I swear to God, you know, I've done tried her eggs and her bacon before in my life. Several million fucking times. So it's like reverse psychology of fucking Sam I am, if you will, up in here with this shit. You know, some Dr. Seuss type shit, you know. And maybe that's the reason that, that I'm repetitive in my rhyming and in my talking and I can write poetry and I can rhyme really fucking decent is because I've heard the same shit on fucking repeat my whole goddamn life. You know, but anyways, so it's like, you, you, I made eggs and bacon, wouldn't you like that instead? And it's like, no, and then it's like, but, well, I guess I'm gonna have to throw it out, you know, and it's like this pity trip, and it's like, I'll eat it, fine, I'll eat it, and then when I had the dog, it's like, I'll get the dog to eat it, fine, whatever, fine, to save you from your, your, oh, you overcooked because you assumed then I would want to eat fucking eggs and bacon, you know, and you didn't just ask me. Well, I didn't ask you because you're asleep and I didn't want to wake you and worry you and this and that. Okay, then just don't do it. Just don't do it. You do your thing over there. And I'll do my thing over here. So even if we're living together and you see me standing there and I'm just like, Don't even bother to ask me what I'm doing. It's none of your damn business. Because you don't understand it. So anyway, so I used an example to her when I was talking to her about how she used to do this to me all the time. And about how I'd be like, I'm going to eat this. I'm going to eat that. I'm going to, you know, or uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. So that way I wouldn't have to go into detail. But then she would just keep asking. Because nothing's not a good enough answer. And so then you have to be like, well, I was thinking of eating oatmeal. Well, I was thinking of eating this. Well, I was thinking of, well, I was thinking of. Oh, my f fucking God. I'm literally trapped in hillbilly hell. If it's not the town, then it's my family. I, I want to get the fuck out of here. I really do. I really do. But I want to get the fuck out of here with my kid and my pets. I don't even care if I got any of my shit, I really don't. I really don't. If somebody returned my kid to me right now and was like, there you go, there's your kid back, I swear to God, I would sit here and I would sell everything. And I would sit here and do what I had to to get enough money to get us on a bus or a plane or whatever and get the 
fuck out of here, which is what I was trying to do, but it's really hard to do that when you don't have a car. And even though I don't have a car, I do have a gin that could help me out ever so slightly enough that maybe, maybe it would work. Maybe. But even at that, it would be maybe, but it would be worth a shot versus this shit that I'm going through. Oh my fucking God. But anyways, sorry. Back to the story of the comparison of what I put on my grandmother to get, trying to get her to understand. I'm supposed to be the dumb one here. I'm like, okay, for instance, she, she smokes. And I said, okay, so every time you do your hand to bring your cigarette to your mouth, because this is how stupid it is to me. You shouldn't worry about every time I'm standing in what is supposed to be my home. If I'm living with you, and you know I'm living with you. And I've even done it to my kid, bless her heart. And But I hadn't done it in the severity that they've done to me. But my God, can you imagine waking up and not even being able to stand in your home? Without somebody going, what you doing? What you doing? What you doing? And it's not a cute little fucking cartoon like off of Disney, you know, with fucking, what is it, Fitties and Ferb and the fucking girl or what? you know, like, it's not, it's not cute. After 30 years, it sure as shit ain't cute, you know? And so, from day one, you know, as a little kid, you know, I'm going in the kitchen and I'm wanting milk. And they're like, what do you want? And I'm like, milk. And they're like, we'll get it later. And then I'm still standing there. Later, because they didn't specify when the fuck later was. And five minutes later, they're like, what are you doing still standing in the kitchen? And I'm like, I'm waiting on my milk. You know, I want milk to drink. You know? And then they're like, I told you I'd get it later. So again, they didn't specify later. So again, I'm still standing there. Because later, and I've done learned, there's a lot of different laters. There is no stability to this redneck, hickey-ass swamp People that I come from or what the fuck ever. And later can be in five seconds or it can be in 35 minutes or it can be in five hours. So I have no idea. There is no foundation for what the fuck later is whatsoever. But anyway, so I use a cigarette um, as an example. And I'm like, so every time you bring a cigarette to your mouth, how would you feel if I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Every time I seen you burn the cigarette to your mouth, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And she's like, well, you know, and I'm like, no, just tell me what you're doing. She's like, well, eventually I'd probably pop off at you and probably say, none of your damn business or, you know, or something like that. And we'd get into an argument about it. And I was like, ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. She, she got it. But a narcissist only gets it on their side. They are so narrow-minded, they only get it on their side. They don't get it on other people's side. I said, so when I'm living here, and I wake up every morning, and I literally, I've lived there, and I've literally went through this. Wake up every morning, and I walk into the kitchen, first thing. And I'm standing there, because I'm like, hmm, what do I want to eat? Hmm, what do we have? Hmm, do we have any of that left? Hmm, maybe. And every morning... What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Nothing. You know, nothing, nothing, you know. Well, what, what are you standing there for? Because I'm thinking. Well, what are you thinking about? Thinking about what to eat? Well, I made, I made eggs and bacon. Eat eggs and bacon. But I don't know if I want eggs and bacon, you know? I ate eggs and bacon for the past three days because you made eggs and bacon then. And I ate it because you made it and I didn't want to offend you and I wanted to be nice. But I am really don't want no motherfucking my, my eggs and bacon no goddamn more. I'm thinking I might want a bowl of cereal. I might want some fucking oatmeal. I might want some grits, okay? And this is the type of arguments that I've got into with her. And it's like, but I don't say the mean, hateful things. Because I know how to mediate. I'm an INFP. I know how to talk to people without having to use cuss words. Without having to attack them. But for some reason in my family, it's like, 
attack, 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 attack. You know, that's the way that they take it is like I'm coming after them like, ha, you know, with a fucking spear, you know, or whatever. Ha, you know, I'm going to get you, you know. And it's like, no, I'm just standing here with my spear. Because I ain't going to lie. I got, I got as much of a spear in me as they got in them. It's just I don't use mine unless I really need to. And I don't need to. Because it's stupid. It's stupid shit. Stupid shit. Stupid. It's <laughs> stupid as hell. But it's like, because they've always, you know, poked at me with their spears, if you use that, you know, metaphor that I'm going with right there and everything. And I'm just standing there like, okay, okay, ow, 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 you know, and then I say, boo to them. You know, I say something to them, you know, and it's like they've taken it that, and I'm still standing here with my spear leaned up against the wall. I don't even give a shit that my spear's there. Like, I'm just like, are you all done yet? Jesus Christ, when are you going to stop, you know? And so, <laughs> and they take it the other way, like that I'm coming after them. And it's like, no, but I'm trying to break it down in your mind. Maybe, maybe narcissism is a fucking mental disorder. Holy shit, it might actually be. Holy fuck, if that's the case, I really don't need to go back. I really need to get the fuck away. It probably is. I mean, I know that narcissistic personality disorder is. That's when you rank really high, and my mom does, and my grandmother I don't know. I got to end it here, though. My time's up, so I'll catch you later. And I hope you're doing good. Keep putting your best foot forward, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.